Thank you so much, and I echo the thanks of our panelists uh, to Lisa, her team, extraordinary, uh, to Jack for his talk, to Stephen Rockefeller for Earth Charter, and Frank Peabody for support of this uh, magnificent effort at Teachers College. I find this to be my bioregion, this whole area. I was born on Claremont Avenue. Uh, my grandmother, Mary Evelyn, also taught here at Teachers College, and she was a huge fan of Dewey. My grandfather taught at Columbia University in uh, European history. And I uh, went to Trinity in Washington, D.C., where Nancy Pelosi went to be involved in civil rights in the anti-Vietnam War, but was terribly disillusioned after Nixon was elected the second time, and went to Japan, actually, where my studies emerged uh, in very profound ways with deep respect for the Asian traditions, and my husband's a specialist in Native American traditions. Um, and that's partly why we tried to do this project on world religions and ecology, to bring in the views of nature from all over the world. Um, but when I came back from Japan, the most profound influence, and I just want to raise up his name with all the ancestors here, the ancestors of Native people, my ancestors, your ancestors, but that is Thomas Berry, who had a big influence in the Toronto School of Education as well. And I want to speak from that perspective, um, along with that of Ted DeBerry, who really founded Asian Studies here at uh, Columbia, and the two of them were powerhouses, uh, and it's partly why we went to China, which I'll tell you about um, in a moment, China and Japan being my special areas of study. These are the places that are gonna change the world, for sure. We need to really incorporate their ways of thinking, which are deeply communitarian. A Confucian worldview is self is not isolated, family in these concentric circles, uh, friends, society, nature, politics, and the cosmos itself. And that image is this whole talk. That, and that has come up over and over again um, in some of these talks here. So what I want to suggest is that the profound sensibilities that are articulated in the ABCs here of this program, awareness, belonging, and connectedness, um, my suggestion is that we need to make even more explicit earth time and universe time, deep time, in other words. And that is a profound grounding of transformation. There is no question. It was referred to by, by Jack many times. We have had students at Yale with our film Journey of the Universe and our book Journey of the Universe, in my office, weeping, reading passages from Journey of the Universe saying, now they know where they belong and why they belong. And now I know where my embeddedness can lead to empowerment. And that is what we need. So the invitation here is to expand all of these extraordinary practices, intuitions, and so on. To say awareness is awareness of wonder, of beauty, of complexity, and of meaning in the universe itself. Because we have, <clears throat> in a reductionist, scientific way, stripped away meaning from the universe and even from nature, purposeless, random, reductionistic, have a nice day. <laughs> and when we made this film, which was on PBS for three years and won an Emmy, and our scientists at Yale said, why did you make the film? And I said, well, to perhaps to consider the possibility that there might be meaning and purpose here, they went ballistic. <laughs> this is the heart of our problem, I would suggest. We have the techniques to do amazing nature education, but nature education needs to be embedded in the ecosystems, the planetary systems, the universe systems, the deep time, deep universe time, deep earth time. And when we embed it in that way, we understand Spirituality is not a human construct. It is part of the whole universe story, and that is the difference. 
It's a difference that makes a difference. Thomas Berry's last book that we edited for Columbia is called Sacred Universe. We were blown away that Columbia wanted to use that title, Sacred Universe. We must reclaim this space. If we don't reclaim this space, the efforts will not be able to go forward with the energy and the capacity and the imagination of the human spirit. So let me be practical. Universe deep time. We have here at the Natural History Museum one of the most extraordinary exhibits anywhere, but so is the Field Museum in Washington, the Smithsonian, uh, and I've seen it in London and France. We have exhibits on the universe that will blow our children and our young people away. You take a walk down the cosmic walk after you go through the Big Bang, the Great Flaring Forth, and the Planetarium Show, and you walk, and every footstep is 100 million years, and you come down from that spiral staircase, and you see one human hair under glass, and it says, this is all of human history. Wonder, awe, mystery, complexity at every stage of a 14 billion year unfolding process. Children understand this. Children are fascinated. One, if we take our planet 4.6 billion years of unfolding, one billion years for the first cell. You show them a cell under a microscope, a picture, the complexity of one cell. Another billion years for multicellular life to emerge. The depths of spiritual understanding and wonder and awe. You take the Hall of Biodiversity there, 1998, it opened. You, the pictures of children standing there looking at reptiles, at fish, at birds, at mammals, at that great octopus on the ceiling. They are thunderstruck by the explosion of biodiversity on this planet in the last 65 million years since the dinosaurs went extinct and the mammals had their capacity to grow and flourish. They understand the power of the livingness of these species and that is also coming back into our awareness with animal behavior, with the hidden life of trees, how forests think, fungi, mushrooms, why they matter. The livingness of our earth and its systems is coming flooding back into consciousness after a period of reductionism, of deadness of matter. The woman who won this awards for fish as being sentient. She just passed away this week. Fish, bird migration, caribou migration. How do salmon come back to the same streams where they were born and spawn again? There is intelligence, spiritualities of diverse forms throughout these systems. Awareness is there. Sentience is there. Why is Jane Lubchenco the most, Jane uh, Goodall, the most famous scientist on the planet? Because she gave sentience, awareness, even culture to the world of chimps. And she is creating for young people magic. These are alive creatures. Every child loves animals. There's absolutely no question sentient, they're alive, they're complex, they have their culture, they mourn. We must bring this back in. Spirituality is throughout these systems with differentiated awareness. It's not self-reflexive awareness, but that's okay. If we lose the sense of continuity between inorganic and organic life and human life, we have lost the possibility of deepening every passage into nature education. 
every fern, every leaf, every tree is part of deep time. And that awakens as almost nothing can, a sense of awareness, of belonging, and of connectedness. Because fundamentally, the stars are our ancestors. They created all of the elements of life and the kinship with animals, fish, birds, ecosystems, oceans is our ultimate kinship with all of life. Thank you.